All right. We should be live right about now. Go ahead and let me know down in the comment section how's the audio and then how is the video quality as well. We got a special treat today. We're going to be bringing on a top 20 UFC fighter in Heinish, a uh, good friend that I was able to meet down at the Bitcoin conference. Super cool and down to earth guy. And man, I want to say thanks for coming on to the channel. How are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing real good. I appreciate you bringing me on the show. And uh, it was a pleasure getting to hang out with you at Bitcoin Conference 2022 down in Miami. We had a blast and uh, a journey it's been since then. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give a quick tweet as well. Uh, I know some people yes, are sir. still coming on the stream. If you are in the uh, live stream right now, go ahead and tweet it out. All right. But yeah, man, it was it was it was definitely pretty cool, man. Uh, chilling with you, man. I had no idea that I'd be like, man, that's that's in Heinish, man. I was like, he's super super cool, man. And so just to, you know, connect with you, man, on a on a personal level and kind of getting to hear your story and everything was just was was priceless, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's uh, you know, it's it's been a a fun journey, and you know, fighting is just full of ups and downs, highs and lows some of the highest highs and the lowest lows. And, you know, I feel people in crypto can relate to that as well. And, yeah. uh, and even in life too. And, you know, obviously I haven't fought in a little while, you know, I got injured in February or I got injured actually last year and just a residual effect of a concussion lasted over. And, you know, I had to pull out of a fight that I had in February and it's given me a lot of time to reflect. It's given me more time on my hands than I would particularly like, as you can't really push through a concussion. You can't push through that type of injury. So it really helped me. Uh, I guess it was a kind of a blessing as well, because I was able to have a bunch of time to really just dive into this crypto space and really go all in with it. And, you know, I've grown so much in the crypto space. I'm constantly learning every single day, you know, um, you know, being around great mentors like you, Mike, and B Roots and Jake, and and these guys that have been in the game for a while, and they're seasoned vets in this game, and so you know, I'm, I'm, uh, it's an honor to be, you know, in the presence of them and and learning so much, and um, you know, it's really it's been a fun journey, and I can relate a lot of things. Uh, I can bring that same mindset that I bring into fighting to crypto, and you know, it's you know, it's a fact. Like you see, all these people fudding. They want to try to FUD, um, you know, like even influencers and YouTubers and this and that. It's like, man, you, you got it all wrong. Like you need to take information that you find from either the the Internet, your YouTuber, your um, your influencer on Twitter. And then you need to make your own decision. You know, you got to take extreme accountability in this game, just like fighting. You go in that cage, you lose that fight. You can't be blaming your coaches, your manager the ref, you know, you, you could, but it's not going to get you nowhere. So, um, you know, I bring in that mindset in the crypto space. It's really helped me excel in the crypto space. I want to share some of that on my YouTube channel that just dropped, uh, two days ago. So check that out. Give me a subscription, hit that notification. Um, and guys, I just want to bring you more than crypto, but also bring you some good plays that I'm in. I shouted out Volt Inu. I made a video the other day. It's up 75% on the day. So I'm trying to get you guys in the same position that I'm in. I don't give financial advice, but uh, man, a journey it's been. And I'm, I'm recovering slowly but surely and looking to get back in the cage this summer. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction. So for some of the people that's just coming on to the stream, uh, we're going to kind of give you guys a brief run through of what we're going to be covering in this live stream. So first and foremost, we're going to kind of do a backstory of, you know, who's in Heinz, the MMA fighter, uh, top 20. We're going to discuss his story. We're going to also talk about how MMA changed his life. And we're going to be talking about crypto and how he's got into crypto and how that's changed his life as well. And so for the people that really don't know your story and kind of how you got involved with, you know, MMA, because you're no stranger to hard work, you know, and being able to uh, win a belt in the LFA, you know, just being at the highest level takes a certain type of person. So just kind of talk to us, like what, what led you into that journey? Because that's not something, you know, you just say, Hey, I want to get punched in the face every day. You know what I mean? So talk to us a little bit about that, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like it's kind of a funny saying that like rich kids don't fight, you know, you see it more uh, now, but you know, it's usually someone trying to fight out of a situation in their life. And, for me, I've been a fighter my whole life, and 
I believe everyone listening to this is a fighter as well. They're just fighting different battles. Maybe it's not in the octagon, but, um, you know, they're fight they're fighting their own battles as well. And uh, hold on, Mike. Let me just tweet this out real quick. Let people know we are live. All right. Perfect. Um, so, you know, I grew up as a kid, pretty athletic, jumped into wrestling at a young age, around age 11. I found a relationship with God at a young age. I did even mission work where we went to Russia. I represented Team USA. We, we preached the gospel and I wrestled. And, um, you know, around the age of 13, I just was so hyper. I was just getting into trouble left and right. And my parents uh, started to take notice as the school was like kicking me out, suspending me, this and that. I went to the doctor and they prescribed me a prescription of Adderall at the age of 13. And I come from a long line of addiction, right? My dad my uncles, my cousins, all through my dad's side. We, we have generational curse of addiction and instantly hooked, man. Started drinking, which led to cocaine, weed, pills. I mean, everything. And so I completely lost my connection with God. And it, even in all this time and all this partying I did, I still managed to be a two-time state champ, which I would have been an easily a three as I pinned my way uh, sophomore and junior. But my senior year, I got expelled from high school. I took second my freshman year. I was a few time All American, second at Nationals, um, you know, pretty decorated wrestler. I got expelled my senior year. I got sent to rehab in my junior year, but, you know, human help only works for so long. And I came out of there, started partying again, um, went to senior Nationals, took fourth in the whole country. It's like the Super Bowl of, of your wrestling career and got a full ride scholarship to Northern Idaho. Went there, but that was one of many opportunities that I just completely uh, blew, like blew it, you know, just blew through all my money, drank away my opportunity, got kicked out of that, came back home. And my parents, you know, I kind of grew up in like a middle class family. We had some things, you know, we weren't like starving, you know, we we were OK. But when I got home, my parents had divorced and it was that during the 2008 um, recession and my parents tried to sell their house. They put everything into their house and they basically lost it. And, um, you know, I came back broke and not knowing what to do. Well, I ended up going to Canada for a little while, lived out there doing door to door sales, got into some trouble, went to jail, sit, sat in jail for six months, got extradited back to the States. But I met some Guatemalans out there and they had a connection for ecstasy. And I started getting pills sent over to Denver, Colorado, and I started hitting the rave scene and doing all that stuff. I felt like I was on top of the world. Well, about eight months of that, I was set up in a Walmart parking lot, pistol to my temple, laying on the, the blacktop. I remember looking at that Walmart sign and I man, I was like, man, I messed up, you know, looking at four to six years as a 19 year old. And I remember saying to myself, no way am I going to prison at this age? So I posted bail. I got a passport. I jumped on a Greyhound, went to New York, said goodbye to my family, hopped on a plane, JFK to Amsterdam with about two thousand dollars in my pocket. Didn't know anything. Didn't know anyone over there. I was a, now a fugitive on the run. And that lasted about, I was gone out of the country for five years. I, I ran out of money in, in Amsterdam. My cousin had a friend in Belgium. I went over to Belgium. I lived with him for a little while. Um, it says my, uh oh, make sure you have the right camera. Mike, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, man. Okay. Um, let me see. You can click the camera. Try again. Let me see. Sorry, I, I lost visual there. Yeah, you're all good. You're all good. Audio's still good though, man. Okay. All right. Well, while I work on that, I'll just keep talking. Um, so basically, you know, I'm over in a foreign country, and basically, I thought to myself, you know, if I can, if I can stay out of the country for seven years, stay out of trouble, it'll be a statue of limitations. So that was what I was banking on, and so I basically um lived in, in belgium for a little while met this crazy english guy went over to england um and he said you know let's get, I'll come to england mate i'll get us jobs i i could not stand england it was rainy it was cold i ended up in the tenerife uh canary islands i got a job doing uh working at a club which basically they paid me in drinks eight drinks when i was working four drinks when i got off <laughs> three months of that i was a full-blown alcoholic um I couldn't even afford 30 euros um, for my rent. And oh, there we go. I couldn't even afford 30 euros a week to live in a cockroach infested apartment with like eight other people. So I was homeless, man. I was living on uh, park benches. I was sleeping on the beach. I was sleeping on friends' couches when I could. And, 
you know, I was at rock bottom, man. And I met these Colombians and they say, hey, gringo, let's go. You know, we don't want to see you living like this. Come stay with us. And God started putting this dream in my heart, like you're going to be a fighter. I always felt it someday, but I could never stay consistent in the gym after high school because of my partying. I was always partying and uh, that consumed my life, my addiction. So um, I moved in with these guys. I got sober for a couple months. And after that, he said, hey, gringo, let's go make some real money. So that's when I started taking trips to Colombia, Venezuela, Aruba, Mexico. We would pick up kilos of coke, we would swallow them and we'd bring them back. And, you know, about 12 trips of this, man, too many stamps in the passport. Um, the police threw me in. The They took me to the hospital, x-rayed my stomach, found drugs, and I got sentenced to a three and a half year sentence in Spain. And, uh, you know, that's when the journey really began. I started to clear my mind and God started really speaking in my heart saying like, you're not, this isn't the life I have for you. And I started training wrestling. They had a wrestling program called Lucha Canadia and it was their Spanish style of wrestling. And I fell back in love with wrestling. I started doing kickboxing. I, ex I eventually got extradited to the North of Spain where they had a boxing program. I started boxing full time, having fights in front of the prison, the whole prison, the guards would come and place bets like the movies. And man, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I told everyone, I said, when I get out of here, I'm going to be UFC champ. And I would beat up guys in the gym and I'll be like, don't worry, bro. I'm going to be the UFC champ. And they used to think I was crazy. And I've gotten in touch with most of those guys, man. And, uh, you know, I'm, it's it hasn't been um, an easy ride, but I'm working very hard to do it. I broke into the top 10 early in my career. And um, my second fight, I fought the number nine guy, uh, Cesar Ferreira. No, sorry. That was my first fight. Antonio Carlos Jr., who is now the PFL champion. He won a million dollars last year. And I broke into the top 10. I took a couple losses last year dealing with some injuries, but looking to come back strong, man. Loving this crypto journey I'm on and just uh, happy where God's got me right now. So that's just there's definitely a lot more to that story. And you can check it out on my Twitter page and I'll be dropping some more videos about that. But uh, in a nutshell, man, that's that's kind of the, the story of the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. You you unpacked a lot, man. You unpacked a lot and definitely been through a lot just through your you know personal journey through an athlete. And just from kind of what I was getting, you've always just kind of been an athlete and a competitor just as growing up as a, a young boy. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just with wrestling, I did soccer before that, a little bit of karate and, you know, just just always been an active person. And, um, you know, I just a guy with a lot of energy who needed to release that in some type of way. And I turned to sports for that. Right. Right. And so how did, uh, how did you get into crypto and when did you officially get into crypto and kind of, how did that segue? And I guess some of that segued it because of, like you said, dealing with injuries, you had a little bit more time on your hands, which gave you time, I guess, to dive into other things and research other things. Right. And so kind of talk to us about how did that lead to crypto and, where did that passion come from? Because when you talk about the cryptos you're into, you definitely have a lot of passion behind it. And so as a fighter, it just kind of pours out of you. So talk to us, like, how did that crypto uh, come into the whole mix? Yeah. So, you know, it started out when, let's see, probably I would say a year and a half ago to two years ago. Um, I actually saw the GameStop run up and I was like, oh, man, these guys made a lot of money. <clears throat> and then, you know, I downloaded the Robinhood app. And I thought AMC is the next big one, right? And I started following the AMC. I bought some Doge, you know. I uh, I didn't buy Sheev as much as early as I would like to, but I bought basically it started with AMC and Doge. When AMC had that crazy run up, which I don't even think was the short squeeze, um, I pulled money out. I was able to put a down payment on a house with that money, and I was like, man, I was like, what else can I do next? And I thought I was going to trade stocks, but I realized that short squeeze has only happened very not very often so and i and i saw what doge and i had some ethereum classic and i caught it before that big bull run obviously doge before it hit 75 cents before you know elon musk went on saturday night live and it tanked um and you know i didn't really pull profit like i should have you know and you know that's something like you guys and jake always preaches to pull profit because it's like man when you get that 5 10x you know like pull some of that out man because you know, take some of your emotions out because it was emotional roller coaster for me. And obviously Ethereum Classic, I got in at like 18 bucks and it went up to like 180. 
And it was just incredible. And I was like, yo, the crypto space, this happens all the time. Yeah. And stocks, you're lucky to get 3%, 5%. You know, that's like, it was like, that was like not exciting for me. So I was like, you know, I'm that, I'm that fast life uh, junkie, you know, that adrenaline junkie. And I love that type of stuff, you know, that fit my lifestyle. So basically I said, forget Robin Hood. I got completely rid of that. Downloaded a Coinbase, downloaded Trust, downloaded MetaMask. And I actually went to um, Best Buy to buy a computer. And I was like talking to the manager and I was like, I need a computer that's for trading crypto. Like, like, what's the best one? And he's like, bro, that's what I do. And basically he really mentored me. Shout out to Winston. Um, he really helped mentor me and really learn in the game. And then obviously just deep diving in, partnering up with some amazing coins that I 100% believe in their, their mission, like Mandox, which is a Christian coin. Um, and then obviously Marshall Inu, as it's a fighting for fighters coin, Vault Inu, and uh, just a bunch of other coins that really uh, had a great mission behind it, something I could really feel passionate about and back. So that's kind of been my crypto journey and obviously just learning more from you guys and going to the Bitcoin conference and just educating myself. Yeah, there's your, there's your uh, Marshall Inu there, man. So kind of talk about how this whole thing spread it. Because when this first came out, man, and as a UFC fan, as myself, man, uh, I thought this was pretty interesting. So kind of talk to us about the whole Marshall Inu thing, giving back to the fighters, giving them a way to, you know, pretty much make more money to, you know, feed their families and maybe live a better life, right? Absolutely. So basically, I actually want to, send this link in the Marshall Inu uh, telegram to get these guys on. Cause I really, I really always appreciate their support, man. But so basically when I told you, right. So around January I'm training, I'm like, yo, I'm not good. I can't take this fight. So I pull out of this fight. You know, you, when you train for a fight and when you have a fight camp, it can cost you, you know, 10,000 and upward just for the fight camp. And then we only get paid when we fight. So, you know, it's a it's a it's a rough sport, right? We don't get salary, we don't get pension, we don't get insurance unless we're fighting. So, you know, I was, you know, out some money and it's just part of the sport. Like I had to pull out, and I'm not the type of guy to pull out. Um, and I was, you know, really upset about it, but I'm just looking online. Talk to my manager like, hey, you know, and actually I found this like stem cell treatment that was super pricey, but and a little bit experimental. And uh, I don't want to go too much in it because USADA's on me for that. They didn't like that I did it without clearing it with them. Um, well, then I'm putting that. Talk. All right. Hopefully we get some MRI people coming in. I just hit them up on the Telegram. Um, but yeah, so. I'm basically searching through Twitter as I'm doing, just doing my research. You know, crypto is just like MMA. You got to train it every day. Knowledge is power. Training is power. The more you train, um, the better chances you have of winning. So I'm trying to put myself in a good spot to win. So I'm literally um, looking through Twitter and all of a sudden I see some fighters that are managed by my manager that are getting sponsored. Check out this cryptocurrency. They just sent me 10K, blah, 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 and Ethereum. And I'm like, yo, what is this? So I go straight to the source. I write a message to the Marshallino crew. Hey, guys, this and that. They're like, yeah, let's get a conversation going. They they literally, I was with a buddy. I threw on Twitter real quick. And I just was like, um, I basically was just looking through Twitter. And I saw they had a Twitter space. So I clicked on it. They saw it was a UFC fighter. They brought me up. And I basically just poured my heart out. I said, you know, it's it's tough for fighters, right? I haven't fought since this time. I can't afford this procedure. And, and this is how it goes for fighters. I love the UFC. You know, UFC will someday be to that level. And I told and I said to everyone, Marshall Inu is, is making history. They are the game changer of game changers in the crypto space right now. And why is that? Because li literally they were paying fighters 5,000 on the undercard, 10,000 on the, and then they were on the main card. And then they were doing a $50,000 bonus for the fan pick favorite by their community and which each fighter would get 25,000 in Ethereum, which I was just like, man, that is so cool. And that's going to spark something serious. They paid, they paid a lot of money, tens of thousands of dollars for me to get this stem cell procedure done. 
They bought my buddy a Jeep because he couldn't get to the gym. They paid for mats for another guy I know who couldn't afford new mats and they hurt their knees because the mats were so worn out. They were doing so many things for fighters and like legit. And at this point right now, they have paid over $4 million to fighters. And what has happened now in the UFC? Why is it a game changer, you ask? Well, look, now UFC is doing their own fan favorite pick where they get 30000 in Bitcoin, which is done by Crypto.com. Obviously, Marshallini took a little heat because they used the platform that Crypto.com had paid for. However, Crypto.com was just paying the UFC. Marshallini was just paying the UFC fighter. Now, Crypto.com also pays UFC fighters. So they made a huge change in the sport. Before Marshallini, nobody was ever paid in crypto in the UFC in a bonus. Now, Francis Ngannou was one of the, you know, obviously we saw him speak at the Bitcoin conference. He took half of his purse in Bitcoin through through Cash App, which you see a lot of athletes and even the governor, not the governor, the mayor of uh, Miami, he takes his salary or half of it in Bitcoin. So you're seeing huge changes. And Marshallino is definitely part of the people who sparked that. They found a problem in a community that they loved and they came along and said, you know what? Let me not just tweet about this or talk about it. Let me be part of the solution to this problem. And they have come along and they've put their money where their mouth is. And they have been a huge game changer in the crypto space. And you're not only seeing, you know, MMA changing, you're seeing crypto change. you got all these coins coming out that are doing the same thing, except for baseball, for gas prices, for uh, all boxing, wrestling, all these different things. So it's really cool. And I'm honored to be part of this journey with uh, Marshall Inu. They, they, like you said, the first three weeks, they went from under a uh, cent all the way up to 19 cents. I think they went to almost a $200 million market cap. They've obviously corrected a lot, but they are doing innovation. They have a staking feature now. And, you know, they're consolidating between three and six cents and they're just spring loading. They reach 10,000 holders and I see all time highs coming in the near future. Yeah, yeah. Not financial advice as well. Just him, him sharing his passion. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we never share financial advice. We just want to put you guys in the same position that we are to be able to make money and uh, learn some more about these crypto projects. Yeah, for sure, man. And that's 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 good, man. And I, I was on the last Twitter space. They had a Chael on and he was talking, man. And I'm a big fan of Chael Sonny, man, who was talking. And you guys had a few uh, conversations back and forth because I know you guys are friends as well. So, I mean, that'd be dope as well to hear him talk a little bit more on Marshall Inu because he was really pumped up about it. And to hear someone that has never really talked about crypto, you know, to hear him talk about it was very interesting. Right. And so I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Chael was a guy who has invested in crypto, but, you know, he's one of those guys where he he, he wasn't too knowledgeable that I understand. I mean, just from hearing him speak, he definitely knows about crypto, but, uh, you know, there's levels to it. And, you know, I feel like most people that listen to your channel, like you guys don't realize it. Like we even like even me, like I don't feel that smart in crypto, but we're like crypto experts compared to your like average Joe Schmo. Like it's hard for them to understand it, which I don't realize or I don't understand why it's hard to understand. It's like a stock. It's, you know, it's it's a technology. It's the blockchain, you know, but um, he. He was super excited. He got in at ground level. He actually used some of his own money and bought the token and had like a 5X in a couple of days. So he was really pumped about it. I know they brought him on the team. He's one of the ambassadors as, as I am too. And that's another thing it's doing. It's bridging the gap between MMA and crypto. And people that were in crypto are now wanting to watch UFC and learn more about UFC and MMA and fighting. And people that are in the UFC or fans of the of MMA are now wanting to learn more about crypto. So it's a win win for both sides. And it's cool to see these coins bridging gaps between two communities and bringing them together with a common interest. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So talk to me, man, if you had to choose and, and I know there's no emotion in it. What what is your you know, your go to coins right now that you're really you know, excited about, of course, Marshall Inu, but what else are you uh, looking into? Um, you know, I'm, I've been really excited about Volt Inu. Uh, they just have migrated from their V1 to their V2 contract. And migrations are usually scary. Usually when I see a migration, you know, it's a, it's a huge yellow flag for me because I've been burned 
on like 10k <laughs> uh listening to to someone i shouldn't have been listening to and you know i mean it was a lesson right we don't lose in crypto we don't lose in life we get lessons we i got a lesson and you know the migration went so smooth it was incredible how easy it was and I'm like, why couldn't these other tokens before do a smooth migration? This is crazy. But the migration was super smooth. And, you know, now they're able to get listed on more centralized exchanges. They got listed on three more in just a week. They have 10 more coming. They have a play to earn game. And they just had a 30% run up yesterday. And I think right now at the time of this recording, I think they're up like 75%. They surpassed a hundred million dollar market cap, and now today they're almost over two hundred million dollar market cap. So that's insane gains, guys. I'm seeing that hit a billion dollar market cap by this summer. And you know, like Mike said, not financial advice, but man, I'm bullish on the project. Yeah. Um, another one is too. It's a smaller market cap, but uh, Mandox. It's my OG token, the first one I partnered with, and the the CEO is a missionary in Guatemala. He has a school. A mission center and uh man they're really giving back to the community i love seeing the use case of these tokens and the utilities really helping real life people in communities that they are passionate about so um that's another one and then you know there's some other little tokens i'm dabbling in right now um yeah, you but, don't got a name of me on one two man it's all good yeah yeah <laughs> you yeah stay tuned to my youtube channel if i think it's worth it they will be coming out soon yeah and his uh youtube channel is in the description as well so definitely uh give him a follow he just uh debuted a couple days ago so definitely check it out also if you are a ufc fan or martial art fan or anything of that nature and so Ian, man, is there anything that you got on your heart man or anything you want to you want to touch on or let the people know uh why we do have their attention um you know i just feel you know the market is really shaky right now right and oh yeah there's a lot of coins and people are just jeeting the charts they won't let it go over one to two million dollar market cap you know people are starting to lose money even me and it's like it's like to the point where it's like man i'm gonna like chill out on buying coins for a little while until i can figure out the market and what it's doing and i just feel like man I just, we all need to come together. We're all in this together. We're all super early. Everyone watching this, man, we're early. We're early to crypto. Even when I, before Bitcoin conference, I was like, man, I'm late, especially being around you, Mike and Jake and B Roots. You guys been in this for years. And so I was like, feeling like, man, I'm late. But when I went to the Bitcoin conference and I realized how early we actually all are. And so if we actually come together, not fud each other's, you know, projects, if someone gets in a bad project, shoot them a dm and let them know be like hey man i don't think this is a good project you know instead of like hey this guy's an idiot he's doing a pump and dump this and that there's definitely sketchy people in crypto it's basically a modern day gold rush it's the digital gold rush and what happened when the gold rush happened there's criminals when there's new money there's new criminals coming and there's new scammers out there and there's always people trying to get over but if the good people in the community could come together and have each other's back you know, and uh, take extreme accountability for all the investments they're making, follow the right people that they believe in, and obviously don't take everything verbatim what they say, you know, make your own decision, you know, don't don't let someone make your, your decisions, make your own decision. But I think as a community, there's so many good people in this community that I feel like sometimes the the really toxic people in this community have a louder voice because it's just it's like a car accident. You can't look away from what they're saying. So I just, long story short, man, I just say, let's come together. Let's help each other. You know, if we all help each other, we're all going to be like in five years, bro, I, I could see us all retired, you know, or, or just doing this for fun because we're passionate about it, but being financially free. So, you know, look, have your buddies back. Even if you don't know them, you just know them from Twitter and you, and you vibe with him, have his back. Don't, don't fud him up if he makes one wrong mistake or if he's, uh, you know, just doing something that you didn't like on that day, DM him privately and figure out, you know, just give him your advice. So I just feel like as a crypto community, like let's, let's stand together strong on this. Larpy, what's up, brother? Larpy's the man. Let's go. Let's go. That's a, that's a huge believer in the Marshall Inu. That guy's been in it since the beginning. We actually were at UFC 272 and, 
man, it was so fun to, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, what's up, man docs? Yes, I did say man docs, the Christ coin, man. Absolutely. I shouted them out. That's the OG coin I've been with. So uh, appreciate the man docs crew, Luke. They have some amazing NFTs dropping soon for you NFT people. Um, you know, the guy is, is a genius with the NFTs and, you know, I feel like they're crushing it. So, um, Nick Stansberry. Wow. What's up? That's, that's, a. I think I went to high school with him. That's legit. So man, that's what's up. Uh, brother. People jumping in here, showing love, man. And yeah, like I was saying, man, like we, we can come together as a community and like help weed out these bad people, bro. And, and we all just want to grow together, you know? Like if we come together in this and, uh, you know, we talk to each other personally. And like I was saying in UFC 272, you talk to all these influencers online. You talk to different people on Twitter. But, man, when we all met together, I was like, man, like, and I'm not going to lie. I was like a bunch of crypto people. There might be a bunch of nerds, you know, like that's just kind of like. But I was like, yo, these are cool down to earth people. And like, I feel like we have such strong communities on the Internet these communities should start coming together in real life because then you realize you put a face behind the Twitter name and you realize like, man, these are down to earth people that I could get behind and I really vibe with. So that was a huge thing that I learned. And I think Marshallini was really going to try to put together some community uh, get togethers, like pool parties after fights, get a bunch of the, the big wallet holders come together and do a bunch of giveaways for everyone to go watch the fights and go to a big after party after and uh, like I said, man, let's let's all grow in this space. Let's there's enough and plenty to go around for everyone. So, uh, man, well said, uh, man. Love the positivity, man. But yeah, we. I mean, I think in all aspects, for sure, man. We all need you know that more positivity in life, man. For sure, man. Definitely. And so uh, I definitely agree. And and one thing to say, I mean, it's just kind of one of those things. We're gonna have that fud. It just kind of comes with the territory, mm -hmm. but. You know, if we can get that positive message out there like you're wanting to do, man, I think we could definitely make a difference in communities for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, if you are uh, coming in late, uh, we pretty much the playback will be available. Um, we pretty much went over, you know, in story, kind of how he got to where he is today, his MMA story, how he got passionate about crypto. Um, his uh, YouTube channel link is in the description below. Definitely uh, head over there and uh, check him out. He just uh, debuted it. Uh, is there anything that you would like the people uh, to know that is still watching about, you know, Ian Hines, the top 20 uh, mi middleweight MMA UFC fighter? Man, I just want to say to the people, you know, if I could be eight years ago, rock bottom in a foreign prison cell with no hope, nothing, uh, nothing going for me no advantages you know and then four years after that breaking into the ufc five years after that the top 10 um you know and then look eight years later being on youtube starting my own channel um you guys can do anything man you know look to the lord for guidance he, he led me through everything he gave me a second chance he healed me of my addictions which i am free from i'm no longer a slave to popping pills and drinking and uh man I've never lived better. Like some people looked like, oh, but you got to do all that. I'm like, bro, now I remember everything. I have an amazing wife and, uh, you know, I get to have it full circle now. And there's actually a movie being made about my life. And nice. my troubles are now turned into a testimony to help you guys, to help other people that are struggling. I never really had a mentor when I was going through my stuff. And uh, but the Lord led me out of that. So um man just keep working hard keep grinding and yeah like we're talking about there's always going to be fud there's always going to be negativity it's when you make it when you're successful that comes with it but ignore that latch on to the positivity and uh like i said man uh you know the lord and savior jesus christ has freed me of my addictions and and uh you know i live differently every day and now i'm able to live on my own terms, not, not a slave to, you know, being addicted to stuff. And, uh, so, you know, praise God for that. And yeah, if anyone's going through a rough situation, you can DM me. I try to reach back to everyone and, uh, give you some words of encouragement and just link you up with maybe some good people that can help you and, and mentor you. And like I said, man, <clears throat> the YouTube channel is coming out. I'm going to be dropping a lot more than just crypto, but you know, it's mainly going to be focused on crypto, but 
I'm just going to give you guys a vlog and just a look into my life. And obviously, guys, the whole goal is to get that UFC belt. I'm training super hard. Um, I'm doing everything I can. Obviously, I can't do contact right now, but I'm swimming. I'm uh, I'm hitting mitts. I'm doing yoga. I am training like everything I can do right now. Um, you know, it's a struggle, man. My whole life I've been training and being in shape and I can't do what I love right now. But like I said, man, sometimes life throws like, you know, curveballs at you and you got to pivot. All right, man, this isn't working out. I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. Boom. I'm going to go to this. This is working out now. Maybe God led me here. You know, God doesn't, doesn't stop you to, to, to hurt you. He stops you to save you. So Maybe he's protecting you from something and maybe he's protecting me from something. I don't know. But God willing, yes, I love yoga. I do love yoga. <laughs> I do a lot of yoga. Um, like I said, man, it's going to be basically I love training. I love fishing. I love the Lord. I do yoga, traveling and crypto, man. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to it. So I'm going to be having my camera guy go around. We're going to get a huge vlog and uh, take you guys, give you a little insight on the life of a UFC fighter, life of the hurricane. And uh, hopefully the movie will be dropping soon. And um, yeah, guys, I'm going to try to bring you guys the best crypto content. And like Mike, like you, you've, you've done such a good job at protecting your brand. And that's why you have such like loyal followers and people that look towards you because you've been so selective with what you and who you work with. And I just like that about you, man, because some people, yeah, they, they, they take the money, man. But, you know, I don't want to be that. I want to find projects that I actually believe in so my people can feel safe when they listen to me. Obviously, I want them to always do their own research. But, um, you know, what what's helped you uh, stay on course to just worrying about your brand more than even worrying about making a quick buck? Yeah, so I'll say the first and foremost thing I did was make sure that I always had like a security blanket that will cover another security blanket. So say, for example, you know, YouTube goes up and down, which we know it does. Well, if you're only depending on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? It may force you to do things that may not be 100 percent ethical. Right. Whereas me, I've always had multiple streams of income and then always just stood on. If I don't truly believe in it, I'm not going to talk about it. Right. You know what I mean? And so with that being said, everything we talk about, even the most legit projects takes time or sometimes they don't do as well as we're going to think. And so, I mean, with that being said, for me, I just always made sure that, um, you know, my income was in the right place, which will always allow me to be 100 percent more free with, you know, how I move. Right. And I always looked at this as like a long term game. Right. I plan to be here a very long time. And so with that being said, I always looked at if you go for the quick thing or the next hype thing, you know what I mean? What do you do next when all of this is said and done? You know what I mean? And so when you look at five years down the road and if there's something you still want to talk about, can keep, can people go back on your track record and say, oh, this guy was talking about this five years ago or back then. And so I just always try to be selective, you know, on what I talk about. Um, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, of course, being a YouTuber, being an influencer, it don't matter who you are. They're going to put you in a certain box and say, hey, this guy or this lady is this person. And I mean, there's nothing we can really do about that, right? Yeah. However, we can still stay true to us, stay true to our community, and then do the best we can. And so that's kind of what I did and what I stand on today. Yeah, absolutely, man. And uh, anyone who came on from the Marshallina community, hit the subscribe button. Mike's the man. You know, he, he brings you honest, amazing content all the time. I love your sign behind you, man. Don't quit. So for anyone out there that's struggling, you know, and, and feels like they can't ever excel, they're too old, too young, too far gone, too fat, too whatever, man. Just trust me, bro. You're not too far gone. I thought I was too far gone. I didn't start training in the or MMA till I was 26 years old. They told me I was too old. I did too many drugs. I was too far gone. I ignored that, all that, and I believed in myself, and I stayed around the people who believed in me most. And I kept pushing. And like you said, man, I love that. Have multiple sources of income. The average millionaire has five sources of income. So um, if you want to be financially free, not everything you do is going to work out. And that's okay, man. We got to take these big risks in life. And I take a risk like that's my sport, man. People want to come in in my DMs after I lose a fight and try to, you know, say this, say that. You suck. You're going to get cut, quit. But it's like, man, I'm out there putting everything on the line in front of millions of people. 
And, uh, you know, I'm okay to, to fail, you know, because every time I fail, I come back with more knowledge on how to succeed. So if you never, if you're too afraid to fail, you'll never have the courage to succeed. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to fail guys, whatever you're doing, you know, we all fail. We all have lessons, right? But we all have wins too. So, um, you can't hit a target you don't see. So write down your goals. And uh, I'm, I know I'm going to be getting ready to now that I've dropped my channel, I'm going to write down my, my goals for my YouTube channel this year. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping to hit like twenty five thousand this year. So. Uh, oh, yeah, man, we can make it happen, man. We can make it. happen. Go. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, once again, his uh, channel is in the description. Definitely head over. Give him a subscribe. Give him a follow on Twitter. Uh, he's always talking about different crypto. He's always spreading that positivity. So. Uh, and man, I just want to say thanks for coming on. I definitely appreciate the kind words. And dude, it was a pleasure meeting you, man, and chilling with you, man, uh, down in Miami Beach, brother. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I appreciate you bringing me on, and appreciate everyone listening. And like, guys, without you guys, you know, we don't we don't have these platforms. So, uh, God bless to all of you. You know, keep training hard, keep doing yoga hard, whatever it is you do. Keep grinding, put your head down, focus on the positivity in your life. Say your prayers in the morning. Look to the Lord for the, the most best advice that you can get. And uh, yeah, man, we'll see you guys at the top. We'll see you at the top. And before we Let's get go. off of here, man, it, I got to say it, man, it's on my heart when you was talking about passive income. So a lot of people like to make the most amount of money they can a month, right? You know, 12K, 15K, 20K, right? Or even more. Well, take that same active income and turn that into passive income, right? Imagine if you're making, you know, 20,000 actively, right? 30,000, 40,000 a month actively. Well, what if you're making that passively? You know what I'm saying? It completely changes the game and it allows you to really live a life you truly want to live. So I'll say that, man, really focus on building passive income to uh, really live that life you want to live. Absolutely, bro. That's why even with me making money in crypto, bro, I, I funnel that towards buying real estate, Um uh, and, you know, starting different things, man, because like you said, bro, you got to have that passive income from different revenue streams and, um, you know, set yourself up, guys. You know, be smart with your money. Don't ape in everything you've got in one project. You know, <laughs> spread it out. And uh, guys, we're all we're all there's plenty enough to go around for all of us. And, you know, I want to see everyone succeed and keep grinding, uh, grinding it out with God. Amen. Amen to that. So uh yeah mike once again it was a pleasure my brother and uh hopefully we can do this again soon i'd love to get you on my channel soon and uh yeah yeah absolutely man just let me know man i'll be there and i uh, definitely have you back on again when you got even some more uh good news to share with us man absolutely we'll do my fight announcement next time on it hey let's do it brother well thanks right. everyone for coming on and right. uh, remember go subscribe to uh em man the MMA fighter, man, super passionate, super honest, super genuine. Go subscribe. His link is in the description, and we'll see you guys on the next one.